Obviously, names like Amazon. I love, love, love Amazon. Amazon uh, broke out today, reclaimed the 10-day moving average. You see how much airspace we have? Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. So remember yesterday from last night's video, um, we said it was a very, very awkward day, right? Uh, the craziest, the, the weirdest part about yesterday's session, okay, was that bullishly, bullishly, um, when we got pulled, especially later in the day, we held the five-day moving average, right? We talked about it in the last night's video, and it didn't take out the previous day's low, which was very, very bullish, especially after a pretty big day the day before. So it was an inside day. And uh, ironically, if you guys remember last night's video, the way the day was set up, right? There was some longs and there was some shorts, and I said, I'm 60, 40 sell buys going into today's session, and the early part of today's session played out exactly that way. Um, when the market you know, was waiting for Powell and Powell's comments, and again, at the end of the day, it doesn't really make a difference what he says. They just speak nonstop just to hear themselves speak. All the Fed governors at some point are, are just sitting around the table playing you know, beer pong, getting ready for their fantasy football drafts. So it doesn't really matter what they say. So you, know, you could probably find in a million different places what, what they're actually talking about. But the most important part was this morning while everybody was waiting for the Fed, you, know, you saw a little bit of, of, of strength you saw some weakness. Uh, a lot of weakness came for the names that we talked about last night. They started really taking apart um, all these cloud software names, right? We talked about NET last night, uh, Crowdsource, great, great heads up today by uh, uh, Ali, Crowdsource, uh, letter U, right? All these, you know, all these names. So a lot of, you know, a lot of names were setting up for a pretty good weakness uh, this morning. And again, we'll get to the individual pivots in a second. But the most important part was kind of the part two of yesterday's scenario, we held ground, right? And we held ground, we put in a higher low off the previous day's low, and the previous day put a higher low of the previous day's low. And we talked about how based on that, we still had a probability, well, not a probability, but at least a possibility, right? A possibility at least getting to the 10-day moving average. And then Powell came to talk, the initial move was a sell-off, and then just like every Powell, uh, pretty much every Powell uh, conversation, the way it starts, it's always blah, and then it ends in a very, very aggressive manner, and stocks close pretty much at the highs of the day. And the most important part of the whole Powell, I guess, interview, a testimony, whatever it was today, the most important part is we took another necessary step back higher, right? And we reclaimed the 10 day moving average. Remember, everything goes in stages. It's like a child. The child can't just wake up uh, one day and start running, right? It's, you're born, you learn how to hold up your head, you learn how to sit up, you learn how to crawl, you learn how to stand, right? Next thing you know, you're running. And that's what coming off the, the, the bottom areas of the market is. Again, if you look at the longer term view of the market, we're still in a downward cycle. Again, don't misunderstand, you know, don't mistake uh, stocks that are moving up from an overall macro environment. And again, you could go through the last five months for uh, a pretty good uh, demonstration of that. But from the day-to-day -day activity and how we plan for the next trading day and how we, we, we view our next trading day, there's actually some pretty good opportunities in that. And if you look at, if you go through charts tonight, right? Um, I will probably say, not probably, I, I, will, I will say I went through about 200 charts in about 15 minutes, right? Wasn't going, you know, wasn't going fine combing because again, I knew kind of what I wanted to, to, to trade and focus on tomorrow. But I went through a whole bunch of charts tonight and, and I have to say, there's something there for everyone. Usually when you look at, uh, you know, after the close, you'll say, ah, there's some names that look pretty good here. Some look pretty good here. There's $15 names that are now $17 names. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, there's Amazons of the world, there's Teslas of the world, there's NVIDIAs of the world. There's some, uh, there's a lot of really good value. There's something there for everyone. And that is uh, probably the most bullish thing I've probably said 
since we started that run on uh, March, January, February, March the 15th for that three week period. Remember that three week period that we had before we got stuffed? And that's what the charts look like today. There's literally something there for everyone. If you trade $20 stocks, I saw some really good looking uh, $20 stocks. Like look at Rivian, I'll give you one. Look at Rivian, right? You don't have to, you don't have to look far. Rivian looks pretty good. All day they were coming for the $28 calls, right? There's a trade there, right? That looks pretty good. Look at, you know, look at a name like Uber. Right? Look at a name like Uber. Got rejected today off the 10-day moving average. What happens if it reclaims a 10-day? Well, again, go see what just happened when we reclaimed the 10-day moving average on the queues. Obviously, names like Amazon. I love, love, love Amazon. Amazon uh, broke out today, reclaimed the 10-day moving average. You see how much airspace we have? If we could just rally for the next couple of days, guys, look how much airspace we have in Amazon. Look at Tesla. You know, starting to set up for the next couple of days. It might not like scream obvious, right? It might not, but if it starts taking out some previous day's channels, you could start seeing a move to 800. Look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA looks really, really ready, right? Really ready, right? Looks really good. Again, closed above the 10-day moving average. Failed a little bit today at the open. It was only a little bit of a cup of coffee, but you could see it's, it's starting to scale out. Look at Apple, right? Again, guys, you could clearly see Everything is the common denominator. Everything is either above the five-day moving average, which, which is the shortest term sentiment, or it's above the 10-day moving average. And again, if you've ever uh, been in the workshops or whatever the case may be in the webinars, you kind of know that's the birth of the trade. So if you look at the macro view of the queues, is it possible we can get a two, three-day rally back to the next 314 supply, that would be kind of cool, okay? That would definitely be kind of cool. Uh, and look the last time, again, when we reclaimed the 20-day moving average, right? Look, look, this has started a really, really big, significant move. So if we could get a move to the 20-day moving average and we can close above that, then we start talking about the 50-day moving average and any close above the 50-day. I don't wanna get anybody so excited, but that's when your risk goes on, right? Anything above the 50-day, right, is bullish. Anything below the 50-day is bearish. So if we can go from the 10 to the 20 to the 50 and close anywhere above uh, the 335, 337 level on the queues in the next couple of days, maybe in the next week, yeah, risk is on and we are back to a uh, really, really good uh, aggressive bullish tendency. So, right, so that's the whole point. You don't need to be, you know, you don't need to feel one way or another about the market. The market gives you plenty of opportunities to the downside. The market get, will give you plenty of opportunities to the upside. The most important part is you just have to be open-minded, trade what you feel comfortable. So if you don't trade Amazon, don't trade Amazon. If you don't trade, for example, Rivian, don't trade Rivian. If you don't trade Tesla, don't trade Tesla. The most important part is being your inner self, the best version of yourself you could possibly be. And again, like I've said before, your, you know, my size 10, 11 shoes, and not gonna fit sometimes your, your size eights, right? So everybody's different, there's different ways to trade, there's multiple processes you could take, but the most important part is, and that's the common denominator, do what feels right, do what works, and mo most important, do what makes you happy. So let's talk about uh, today's session. Again, definitely split up into two different views. Uh, the first part of the day uh, was pretty much sell bias, right? Pretty much sell bias. They really started taking apart these uh, software stocks one by one. DDOG, NET, um, what was the other one uh, we had? DDOG, DDOG, Crowdsource, they took down Crowdsource. Uh, NET that we talked about in last night's video, they took down as well. And then the afternoon was for the bulls. So let's talk about this. Uh, this was the one, right? This is definitely the one. Uh, this confirmed when Powell stopped talking or at least took a breath right? This is the big one right here. And I think this has so much possibilities. If we could gap up tomorrow and we could, we have one of those gap and go sessions, you could get some really, really good airspace on Amazon. Uh, 2280, uh, once it took out that second entry at 2285, uh, Amazon is off to the races, right? Closed pretty much you know, within, you know, within striking distance of the highs. If this thing confirms tomorrow, guys, again, if we have a two, three day rally, why can't it fill in this whole airspace? I'm not saying it will, but can a girl dream, right? So there's a lot of airspace on Amazon, a lot of good uh, possibilities there, but great move so far on Amazon. Uh, Tesla obviously never got down to uh, 719. Uh, NVIDIA, you know, a little, I was a little disappointed in NVIDIA. Uh, it turned out to be a cup of coffee, a 182. 
uh, needs to build. They were coming for the 85 calls weekly, very, very aggressively out the gate. And unfortunately, it only tra it only went to like 8370s, right? Um, it was very, very odd. Then they, you know, then they sold the stock off, but I still like it. I, I want to see if it can start uh, building above today's channel in the next couple of days. Uh, AMC never, you know, never came close to 1150. They actually uh, started getting higher. Uh, uh, CVX only rallied like 60, 70 cents. Again, these oil stocks are investments. They're not uh, trades. But here comes, uh, here comes all the software names. Uh, NET 57. If it builds below, can flush. Here was NET, right? Here was NET. It took out 57, went all the way down to 53 and change. Uh, again, they started hitting these things one by one. Winnebago, I got filled on such little size. It went down 50 cents. I, I just lost I just lost caring about it. I wound up losing 65 cents on it. Good riddance. I hope they buy a nice high, happy meal with their gains. Uh, letter U, 35.90 if it builds below can flush. Uh, only went down a dollar, but again, it was that same theme uh, off the software. Uh, you know, off the software cloud space, they all got hit in tandem. Uh, da, 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 Tesla, you know, nice little, nice little move on Tesla. Nothing big for experienced traders. Seven thirty-five, uh, sneaky area. If it, if, if it blushes below, it got down to about seven twenty-eight. That was the linear regression line. That's when I was like, hey guys, make some, you know, cover some, cover some, cover some. Uh, again, nice little scalp here. But now Tesla is actually setting up back to the upside. Hopefully, in the next day or so, we'll definitely watch that. And this is kind of what I mean by there's something in the market for everyone. Like this is not for me, right? Uh, VERU is not something that I'm going to trade. Uh, but this is, you know, this thing, they started coming for the weekly uh, $18 calls. And for all you guys who are still long this thing, congratulations. Uh, needs a new base over 1464 and 1520. That's the daily supply. This thing erupted into the close, right? Erupted into the close. Here is the 1460. Here is the 1520. It erupted into the close. Closed at 1560. Uh, it traded as high as after. It's right now in after hours trading uh, at 17. This thing tomorrow, if this thing gets above 1750, all those $18 uh, call buyers are going to be very, uh, very happy. So if you are holding that, great job uh, there as well. Again, here comes NET. Uh, here comes NET. Crowdsource. Ali, I still owe you lunch. Thank you very much for bringing it to my attention. Uh, 144.82 for experienced traders. 143 macro needs to confirm. Here was Crowdsource. Great move. Beautiful move. Again, today was what was cool about today. Again, it was just something for everybody. And that's kind of what the coolest market is. So it took out the 44.82, confirmed the 43, and went all the way down to 140 and change. Really nice move on Crowdsource. Uh, letter U, here comes 35. Tesla. They're coming in, you know, that's it. So that's it, guys. So go through your charts. There's a lot of looking, you know, good looking charts tonight. Something, uh, something is there that's gonna meet your criteria. Something there is gonna meet your comfort zone. Something is there that's going to meet your account size and your experience and your risk tolerance. Now it's up to the market gods to confirm everything of our research is telling us and see if we actually can get that second wave of buying tomorrow. Um, I actually have to uh, run right now. My son's AAU team, for all you basketball fans, uh, he he is playing against, what's the guy's name? Uh, Kyle Anderson. He sponsors an AAU team, uh, eighth and ninth grade boys. So if like John Moran suits up for his team, I'm telling my son he's on his own. Guys, God bless. Have a great night, everybody. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Good try.